What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, we're talking about one of my all-time favorite topics, wood chips. I think you'll hear some things you never have before, and I'll show you if they actually work. Let's go. Why is it that some garden with wood chips and have issues, while there's others that garden with wood chips and claim their plants have never been healthier? That's a big difference. In my opinion, one of the reasons people have issues has to do with the application. But before I get too much into that, Let's talk about the reasons why. Why wood chips? Here's where I'm gonna be able to drop something on you, or at least a different perspective. To do that though, first we gotta go back to like seventh, maybe eighth grade, and talk about the first law of thermodynamics. The first law basically states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. That energy can only be transformed or transferred from one form to another. And what are the masters of converting solar power energy? Trees, look at this thing designed for taking the solar power and storing it and converting it. Converting it into what? Into the fruit we eat, into the leaves, into the branches. So that's why we want to get these wood chips in. Because what these are, are super condensed solar power energy. But in the form they're at right now, they can't really feed the trees. We need something to help convert this. What is it though? What's the link? What's the bridge that turns this organic matter, the wood chips, into beautiful humus? into nutrition that's bioavailable for the plants directly. Let me flip the camera and show you just what it is. All you have to do is dig down into the soil. Or not even to the soil, just dig into the wood chips. Let me get a section where I don't have something growing. See the borage coming up? And the whole story is in here. Here's the fungus. This is what's gonna break down a lot of your wood. Some people think it's uh, that you need greens to break down the wood chips, nope. The fungus are the teeth of the forest. But you want those needles and those leaves in there because those are gonna feed the worms immediately. And let me show you what it looks like when you let the microorganisms do the work. And that's how this whole garden is. Again, I didn't work for it. I put the right system in. I put the wood chips down. I put the organic matter down. That's what draws in the life because you actually want a system with the most life, the most activity. The more life, the better. This way when I take plants, like my transplants, I'm plugging living plants into living soil. That's the way I like to do it. Another great thing about wood chips is their ability to hold and displace water. To understand this, we gotta go back to the tree, who's not only the master at solar power, but also the master at moving water. Moving water? Yep, think about it. A tree is essentially a giant water pump. Its roots going deep into the ground, pulling up that groundwater, or even any water that rains, pulling that up, moving it through its roots, through its stem, up into those leaves at the top of the tree. Look at the size of that mulberry there. All the way at the tippy tippy top of those leaves, water has to be brought all the way down from the roots to the top of that. So that tree is obviously a master at pumping water. All the way up top there, those leaves on the mulberry, that's getting water. And the redwoods, those leaves all the way at the top of them, they're getting water. So obviously these trees can move water and it's gotta go in a sense through the wood and that's why the wood is just so great, the wood chips to have down, because they can retain that moisture, but like I said, they can displace it if they need, and there's plenty, plenty of oxygen within it. One of the main reasons these wood chips allow for a lot of oxygen is because of the varying sizes. They're all different sizes, they don't all fit together nicely, which provides good pore spacing, good air space. Similar to the aggregates in a soil. With a healthy soil structure, we've got soil aggregates in there that are all different sizes, again, allowing for air space and pore space. Because roots, they need oxygen to breathe. But when it comes to the wood chips, we actually have to have oxygen within there because we want a decomposition process known as aerobic, not anaerobic. Anaerobic decomposition is when you get that foul smell, all slimy, we don't want that. We want aerobic, with air, so the worms come in and a lot of that healthy fungus, everything we want works in that oxygen rich environment and that's what the wood chips provide. So three of the main most important things, energy, which is basically fertility, converted through the microorganisms, the worms, and all the soil life. Second, the ability to move and displace and hold water. And third, the ability to provide an environment with plenty, plenty of oxygen so important. The three main things we actually kind of need to grow food besides sunlight. When it comes down to it though, words are just words. I think it's better if I could show you the difference. We're in an area now in the seven-year-old food forest in a system that has the no-till method with the direct application, layering the wood chips in a forest just built from wood chips. We've got a permaculture saying, it goes a little like this, a forest grows on a fallen forest. So actually the wood chips 
the high organic matter environment provides the perfect setting for more trees to grow, for all life, for abundance. Let me show you some of the soil outside of the food forest compared to what I showed you in here. Don't worry, we're not going far. I'll just step outside of the food forest a few feet, show you the forest behind me where we're just hanging out, having an awesome time. Thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying it, hit the subscribe button and I'll show you some more of the food forest, but let me show you the soil at my feet right now. You can see, well, we've got very, very sandy soil, compacted, hard. Uh, I can't even dig in it. And I showed you what this stuff was like in the food forest. This is night and day. I have sand, I live right by the water. Let me show you what happens when you put those wood chips down back in the food forest. You saw it, it's sand, it's hard. That's not super inviting for growing plants. But once you get those wood chips down, once you get the worms in, and they come automatically. I wanna walk you through here. Now I'm gonna take you just, how far was that? Maybe five feet maybe? No, not five, maybe 15 feet. Let's look at the soil here. We're underneath an apple tree. What do we got right away? Some beautiful worms. The soil is alive. That soil was dead. Look how soft it is. Look at that, it looks like some chicken food to me. But this is what happens. Get the wood chips down. You've seen the soil. Now let me show you some more of the garden and give you the proof in the plants. Let me take you through the food forest now, show you the plants, and let you decide on whether or not you think wood chips tie up nitrogen or if there's any issues with growing with them. I'll also go over a few of the issues that I get in the comments sometimes. One of them is walnut wood chips. People ask me regularly, James, can I use walnut wood chips in my garden? Are they toxic? Uh, yes, you can use them, absolutely. You can use any organic matter mulch as long as you layer it. Um, some of the issue with the, with the walnut has to do with their roots. They've got a chemical within the roots, but we're not worried about that because when we get those cut up wood chips, even if we have the roots within there, by the time the nutrition for the plants is bioavailable, it goes into the ground, that's not it's not, it's not anything like walnut wood chips anymore. That's something completely different. It's humus, it's broken down organic matter mulch. And a lot of this uh, chemical, I believe, is sent out while the tree is alive, not while it's dead. So the tree's not gonna be exuding the chemicals while it's living, I mean, while it's dead. You should be fine with that. That's one of the issues I often get. So any kind of wood chips will work, any kind of organic matter mulch, as long as you're layering. Look at all these peach trees in here the cherry trees, the pear trees, and let me show you some of the fruit on a few of them. Here are some moon glow pears, looking nice. The tree looks like it's gonna have a good harvest. Let me bring you some cherries. Here's some of the cherries from the Bing. They're getting big quick. No fertilizers, all natural, just wood chips down. Annuals too, we have a lot of brassicas planted in here. I could show you more of the food forest and give you more examples of plants that are just thriving in the wood chips. Annuals, perennials, fruit trees. Everything seems to grow well, in a natural environment. That's because we're looking out at nature. We're looking at the forest. We're learning from that. We're allowing that to be the teacher. And we're taking trees, think about it, a 40 year old tree, 40 years of condensed solar energy. We're putting on the ground and we're getting that energy. And it's growing great food for us. Let me show you some strawberries. These strawberries look very happy growing in wood chips. They're not the only thing though. I probably showed you this section before. We've got yarrow. We've got an apple tree. We've got grapes. We've got strawberries. We've got mint, all growing together, all green, all ready to produce, all growing in wood chips. In the past, I encourage you to have a perennial mindset, but I'm not just talking about plants. I'm talking in the garden too. So when you put your garden in, make sure you put one in that's actually gonna get higher in fertility every year. Bigger harvest with less work. That's why I do the wood chips. That's why I go with no-till method. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and don't forget to check us out on Steam It. We love posts on there. James Prigioni is out.